Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Deb Morris, your spirit poet, and amazing to be here again this morning on this journey, this journey of becoming. Becoming what? Becoming what God wants us to be, like Him, on this journey of seeking Him and finding Him. And when we find Him, we are immersed in Him, immersing ourselves in Him, taking on His character, um, being, 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 becoming one with Him, becoming one with our Creator, with our Father, where He can have full expression through us and we can be a reflection of who He is. That is why we're here. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus. We're here to magnify Him in our lives. He says when we lift Him up, men will be drawn unto Him. When we lift Him up, when we exalt Him, when we bless Him, when we praise him, then men will be drawn on to him, not to us, but to him. And that's why we're here. This is why we come here every morning. This is why we seek after him. This is why our hearts cry out to God saying, Father, Father, here we are. Here we are. You know, we are willing. We are willing and obedient. We are willing to walk the path. The scripture this morning on my phone that popped up and I smiled and just shook my head was they that that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I know the flesh wants to do so much. The flesh wants to have its way, wants to do its own thing. And then we feel happy in the moment. But as the scriptures say, they that sow in tears those that sow on the back of sacrifice, those that do what God wants them to do, even in the moment when it doesn't feel good, when it doesn't do anything for our flesh, when it doesn't appease our five senses, when we sow that in tears, we shall reap in joy. This time spent before the Lord may have been, may have taken the place of something else that we used to enjoy. But don't worry, not to worry. Nothing done for the Lord is ever wasted. No time spent with the Lord is ever wasted. No time spent searching out his goodness is ever wasted. We shall reap in joy hallelujah hallelujah i mean the promises of god are so amazing the word of god is so amazing the precision of his word of his promises of his warnings of his um of the prophetic all of these things are so amazing and it, it, it you know truly we cannot truly appreciate or embrace the ways and things of god without um, without falling in love with him. There's no way. There's no way. Yes, you can, you can appreciate to a level. You can, um, you can, there's a level that you go to, but then you hit that ceiling. You hit that ceiling. It's when you begin to see God. It's when you begin to fall in love with God. It's when you begin, when you've met him and he's met you and you've begun to have conversations and he's beginning to change you and he's beginning to talk to you and teach you and lead you that you begin to fall in love with his word as much as as, as, as it convicts, as much as it sets straight, as much as it, you know, as it takes us to a place where our flesh doesn't like, you begin to fall in love with the word. You begin to understand the, 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 the plans that he has. You begin to understand what is laid out in the, in the scriptures for us. Amen. And it all becomes so clear. It becomes so clear. And because it's so clear, it's so easy to follow. Yes, there are still times when our flesh rises up, but it still, it takes a hold of you. It captivates you. That's the word. The word of God captivates you. Captivates you. It takes you captive. It takes you captive. You know, Paul Wilbur has a song. He says, in your presence, that's where I belong. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, in your presence, oh God. And then there's a part that says, there's a stanza that says, I want to go where the, the threat of evil cannot reach me. Something like that. I'm, I'm not sure if you know the song. You can look it up. It's called In Your Presence. In Your Presence. It's written by Paul Wilbur. 
And, you know, it just talks about the presence of the Lord and what it offers and what it keeps you from and what it, what, 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 how it's, um, how it literally just, um, just covers you, covers you and keeps you in that place where the presence of the, where, 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 where the life of God is, you know, and it's such an amazing song. You should probably go look that up on YouTube, see if you can find it and play it and just minister that to the Lord, minister that to the Lord and let it in turn minister to you. Amen. So that we can, we can, we can have an understanding, have an understanding. We hear as we hear, as we hear, it becomes real to us as we hear it. And as we accept it, as we hold on to it, it becomes our reality. Amen. And this morning, I just want to jump over there to Nehemiah. Yes, we haven't been to Nehemiah, I don't believe. <laughs> this is a new one this morning. But let's jump over there to Nehemiah, the last chapter of Nehemiah, verse 13. I just want to show you something. I also wanted to share with you a small testimony. So let's just hurry into this. And it says, in those days, I saw the, what the Jews had married women of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children spoke half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. So that's where I wanted to get to, actually. But I just wanted to give you a, a preemptor. Um, so the verse 24, And their children spoke half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of his people. Now, this was when Nehemiah had come home um, to build, to rebuild um, the wall and to, no, the temple, to rebuild the temple. And he had been given all these things by the king and he had come home because his heart was so heavy. The king saw that, you know, he was in real um, distress, asked him what was the matter. That again was, you know, him following the heart of God and, and, and God provided the way, um, provided um, everything that he needed to go in and to rebuild the temple, to do the work of the Lord. God provided everything Nehemiah needed to do the work of God. Amen. That's, that's, how, that's how awesome our God is. But anyway, he goes home and when he goes home, he realizes that everything is turned on top of his head. Even though the people are in captivity, even though they had suffered such loss, instead of returning to the Lord, they had gone farther. And now even their children could not speak the language of the Jews. Even their children could not speak the language of the Jews. Their, their traditions, their, their sacred civilization was literally being lost. It was being stripped away. It was being cast into oblivion because the people had decided to follow after their flesh, after their own way, and had decided to, to turn fully from the Lord. And this is what's happening. This is what is happening. We can see it. We spoke about it yesterday. We said types and shadows. The word of God are types and shadows. He is setting examples so that we may know which way to walk. He's setting examples so that we may know which way to walk. And we see here, we see here where, 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 where the people of Israel had gotten so caught up in their own selves, in their own feelings, that they literally denied God. They turned their backs on God. They, they walked a different path. Amen. They, here they were. Their children did not know. And if their children did not know the, 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 the languages of the Jews, then they didn't know the traditions either. How would they have known what God had done for them? I always, I always loved the way the scriptures would say, and they made a memorial. At the time when they crossed over the Red Sea, they made a memorial. When they crossed over the, the, um, the Jordan River, they made a memorial. Every time God did something for them, they made a memorial. And the question was asked, when the chi when, and it was said, when the children would ask them, what are those stones for, mother? What are those stones for, father? That they would tell them, they would recount the stories of how God delivered them. And so this saddened me so because not only were they not, they, they, they weren't able to hear those stories anymore because the Israelites had put God literally behind them and they had decided to forge forward without him. This is after their leader, their, the, 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 um, the man upon whom God had placed the beginnings of this land, Moses, had said, if you won't go, God, then I'm not going. 
But here they were, the descendants were saying, you know what, we're leaving this behind and we're pressing forward without God. Not even the language. And we have to be so careful. We have to be so careful that we don't fall into that. That we don't fall into that thinking that we're still serving God. These were priests. These were the priests. He was talking to the priests. If you go further up, you find that some of the priests also had even done this wicked thing. And they, had, they were still priests. We can, still, we can be living in a backslidden state, in a state of disobedience, and still be believing that we're walking in the way of the Lord. And then we get weary and we fall away because why? We say God is not for us. But that's not the truth. We haven't activated the principles. We have yet to activate the principles. See, God's word is built on principles. The kingdom of heaven is built on principles. Every kingdom has a law. Every country, every city has a law. And we must follow that law. If we are to be called children of the Most High, then we must follow the law of the kingdom from which we come. We cannot put it aside and, 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 and run after um, the laws of another kingdom, the ways and the traditions of another kingdom. If we take on that civilization, then we take them on. We take on their characteristics. We take on their attributes. And I love what Nehemiah said in verse 26. He said, didn't Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations, there was no king like him. And he was loved by his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, foreign women caused him to sin. And we're going to move foreign women. And we're going to move all that. And we're going to put in the, the, the traditions of man. Let's put in the traditions of man. The traditions of man, the earthly way, has the ability to cause us to sin. And that's why I started with that song, In Your Presence. We have to remain in the presence of the Lord. Outside of the presence, we will be drawn away by our own lusts. I learned that. I learned that the enemy cannot let you do anything. He, he can tempt you, but it is your lust that draws you away. It is what your heart desires that causes you to walk the way you walk. So we have to guard our hearts with all diligence for from it flows the issues of life. We have to guard our hearts with all diligence. I have been a Christian since I was a young child. I remember I was nine years old, nine years old when I gave my life to the Lord and um, spoke with, 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 with tongues. And um, it was so, it was such an amazing journey. I had learned so much. I'd been in Bible school because my mother went to Bible school. I had learned so much already, but there was so much for me to learn. There was a, a path that I had to take of self going into the Lord for myself, not just listening to what someone said, but learning what God said for myself and walking along that path. And that's something that I neglected to do. That's something that I had neglected to do for so long. And I remember up to a couple of years ago, and this is a story I wanted to tell you. I was at church that morning, and I remember the praise and worship leader, she was singing. She was singing, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I said, Lord, there's no goodness running after me. I loved the Lord. I was living for him. There was nothing more that I wanted than him. But there was also, there was also, um, it, it just never seemed like I was able to touch the things of God. People would talk about the way that God was blessing them and the things that God was doing in their lives. And it just, I couldn't seem to touch those things. It, could, it seemed to elude me. And I had to ask the Lord all the time, God, why? Why? Why do, why do these things elude me? Do you not love me? Is this, is this not my path? Is this not the way that I should walk? And I would always ask the Lord. And there were many times that I would grow so weary, I'd just give up. I'd give up on seeking the things of the Lord. <laughs> you only see the top of her head. <laughs> There's so many times that I'd just give up and just fall back 
then I'd come back because I was so hungry. My hunger, my hunger could, would not allow me. My hunger would not allow me to not seek and pursue the things of God. So my hunger overtook me all the time. And I had to come back and then I'd grow weary again and I'd fall back and I did not understand why, God, why? Why am I not able to pray in the manner that you've prescribed? Why am I not able to seek your face? Why am I not able to seek your word? Why, God? Why, why, why? And my heart was broken so many times. I was broken so many times. But I kept going back. I kept going back because I knew that life aside from God did not, it didn't matter. Nothing else mattered. And so here I was in that church that Sunday morning and she's singing and I just, I got so irritated and I wanted to shout, I wanted to scream out, God, where are you? And then, you know, my pastor went up and he was ministering the word, man, he was excited. And he said, he was, he, he, he started talking. If I look in my book, I can find the, um, the notes that I wrote that day. But when he finally said, um, you must fight the good fight of faith. And do you know what a good fight is? A good fight is when you are winning. I thought, God, I'm not winning. I am losing. And I even wrote it in my book. I'm like, God, what? Why am I not winning? I am losing. I was getting some hits, boy. And I just couldn't. I, that morning, I was so overwhelmed with, you know, just failure not being able to touch the things of God. I took my bags and I just walked out of church. I just walked out. I stepped out. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I was walking into, but I just walked out because I couldn't, I needed to touch God for myself. Yes, I heard what the pastor was saying. Yes, I heard the song that the praise and worship minister was singing. Yes, it made sense and I knew it was the truth, but I had to find my, I had to find his truth. I had to find that truth for myself and hang on to it. It's a, it's a personal thing. It's a personal journey. So I had to personally find that. And I stepped out, I stepped out, I remember I, I went to another church, and as I stepped into the church, the pastor was going up, and he said, he said, do you ever feel like you're on a journey, and, 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 and you're in the middle of a desert where there's no gas station, there's no, there's no gas station anywhere close, your GPS doesn't show any gas station, but you're running out of gas, and that's exactly how I felt. And I listened to his sermon. It encouraged me a minute. I stepped out and I remember going to Burger King. I don't even go to Burger King. I don't eat Burger King. But that's where I went. And this, this particular Burger King had, had a building that was being renovated right across from it. And I'm looking dead at the building, at the wall of the building. And the Lord began to show me. And he began to show me these things. He showed me. He said, you see this building? It's been here for, you know, for years. It had been there for years. It's Henderson's Bookstore, those of you who are in Montego Bay area. And it, was here, it had been there for years. It had been, you know, just, just like a, 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 a landmark for years. But now the owners had decided that they were going to refurbish. They were going to refurbish it. And they literally tore out, gutted the building. It had to be blocked off from, from view for a while. And they gutted the building. But when they had finished and when the, when the, when the, when the obstructions um, to the building had been pulled down, there was this beautiful, practically new building, that modern building that was before us. And the Lord used that and showed me. He said, listen, you're here. And there are things inside of you that are known to man, to me, to yourself. But there comes a time when I am ready to move, that I must come in, I must be given full access to come in, even to obstruct you from view sometimes, <laughs> even to hide you in that moment so that I can restore you, so that I can renew you, so that I can make you into what I want you to be. The old you is insufficient. The old you is inadequate. The old you cannot carry me. That was an old wineskin. An old wineskin cannot hold new wine. So what I have to pour in you cannot be poured into that. 
And it's never easy to be torn down. It's never easy to be gutted. It's never easy for, for, for the installations, the things that were installed into you to be ripped out, removed, and cast away. It's never easy. In some cases, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause you to break. In most cases, it's going to cause you to break. And regardless of what Tasha Cobb says, it's not gracefully. <laughs> I have been broken many times and never gracefully. Never. I don't know about being gracefully broken, right? And so that was that was the that that was what started me. And I, I began, you know, there were times that I had cried out to God and given God my all. But the truth was I hadn't. The truth was I hadn't. I thought I had. And that's why the scriptures talk about the word, the word that bears everything open before the Lord. He shines that light, man, and everything is open before him. And that's what happened. That's when I just, every wall that I had built, everything that I had, you know, I just laid it all out. Laid it all out. Even after my, 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 my conversion um, in 2011, 2012, where I had met the Lord, there were still things in me that, 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 that you know, were, were blocks, stumbling blocks stopping blocks. There were still areas in my life where I had said, nope, you can't touch that. That's mine. That's my personal space. You don't come here. I'll give you 99%, but you got to leave this one for me, Lord. And then that day I just said, you know what? Mm -mm, nothing, nothing. And let me tell you, it's an ongoing process. It doesn't happen in one day. It's, an, it's still going on now. It's still, I'm still being reformed. I'm still being transformed. And that's why I have to stay in his presence. That's why I have to stay in his presence. Let me tell you something. There is this other thing. We want the promises of God, but we have to follow the process that he lays out. We have to pro follow his stipulations in order to reach and touch the things that we are desirous of. Desire in and of itself cannot give you the things that you, that you desire, cannot give to you, cannot, cannot give you access there comes obedience so the thing you desire you must be obedient to the thing that is required in order to touch those things and that's what i learned that's what i learned and on that day when i decided to just give my all to the lord and the process that he was taking me on the journey i followed i followed i took his yoke yeah i took his yoke so i followed his way it was his path no longer mine i wasn't pulling against his yoke i was now going in the path that he had for me and that open doors that open doors that opened doors, it opened my eyes, it opened my heart to the possibilities that were in Christ Jesus. It opened me to so many things. Blessings that seemed to be kept away from me, found their way to me without me even asking. Blessings found their way. And that's how I know that the scriptures are real. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. The things that you are seeking for, the things that you're searching for, the things that you feel like you have, you, have to, you have to run after so you don't have time for the things of God. You're too busy for the things of God because you're running after these things. Let me tell you something. When you seek his kingdom first, when you stay in his presence, when you run after him, those things come looking for you. They come looking for you and they don't stop till they find you. Let us not, let our eyes not be taken away from the things of God. Let us not allow the traditions, the promise of, of excitement and entertainment and all of that to take our eyes off the Lord. Let us stay focused on him. Let us follow his leading. Let us follow his guiding. Let us seek him for ourselves. Yes, what your pastor says to you is important, 100%, but that's just the beginning of the journey. When you sit there on a Sunday morning and he ministers, his, ministers the word of God unto you, that's the beginning. That's where you start. That's where you start Sunday evening. You start there and you begin to make that journey in the Lord. You say, Lord, wherever you lead, that's where I'll follow. That's where I'll follow. I'm going after you. I'm coming to find you, God. And I'm using the word of God as my path, the light unto my feet and the lamp unto my path. If there's anything in you, whether you know it or not, and there usually is, go to the Lord. Seek his truth, his way. There are many truths. 
There are many truths. Know this. Know this. Because the scriptures tell us that the spirit of the Lord will lead us into all truth. Lead us into... So there are other truths. There are other truths. Understand this. That, 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 that present as truth. They're not real truth, but they present as truth. And they can pass as truth. They're counterfeit to the truth. But they look real. The word of God inside of us will help us decipher and discern that which is his truth. That will lead us into all understanding. That will lead us into wide open spaces. That will lead us into the path of righteousness. Oh God. I love you, Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Say, I love you, Jesus. Let's give him some praise right now. Say, thank you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you for the grace to walk in your truth, God. Thank you for the grace to walk in your way, Father. Thank you for the grace to touch the things of God. I'm Deb Morris, your spirit poet. It has been a pleasure and a blessing to be with you. See you next week. God bless you.